In this video, you will learn about the Tableau server architecture. And then we're gonna do a deep dive into each server component of the architecture to understand how it works and what it does. And we start right now. The server layer contains mainly of three stuff. Two interfaces left and right, and in the middle we have bunch of server components. The left interface is the data connectors. They're gonna connect the external source systems to Tableau server components. And in the right side we have the gateway. It's gonna receive requests from different clients, and it's gonna connect it to Tableau server components. All right, so now let's go more in details about the gate component. So in one hand we have requests come from different clients, like a login request from web browser or a publish request from Tableau desktop. And in the other hand, we have different Tableau server components like the app server, VizQL server and so on. And the gateway gonna be in the middle that knows how to forward the requests from different clients to the right server components. And the other task of the gateway is balancing stuff around. Let's say that you are working in multi-node environment where you have two nodes. When the gateway receives the first request, it's gonna forward it to the node number one since both nodes are free. But now if the gateway gets a second request, it's gonna say, oh, node one is full, let's process this request in node number two since it's free and so on. All right, so the gateway in Tableau server is like a distributor that knows everything. You know someone like that? Let's just say I know a guy who knows a guy who knows another guy. So the gateway has two tasks. First, it routes the client requests to the right component. And second, it does load balancing if you are running Tableau server in distributed environment. All right, so now we're gonna start talking about those Tableau components in the middle. And in Tableau server, there is like different arts of components. We have servers, we have engines and storages. And we're gonna start with the servers. As you learned in Tableau server, there is like different processes, the login process, publish, accessing a workbook and so on. And in Tableau server, they designed different servers for different processes. So let's start now with the application server. The application server is responsible for different processes. Like as we learned, a user login request gonna be forward to the application server. Then the application server gonna check with the repository or an active directory, depend on your configurations, to find out if the user is allowed to access the server or not. And the other process the application server handles is the publish process, where the application server gonna get the publish request and it's gonna split the workbook into two files, the XML file to be stored in the repository and the hyper file to be stored in the file store. And one more task for the application server is to render the server interface. All those little stuff that you find in Tableau server, like icons, images, projects, menus, it is the application server who render those stuff. So the application server is responsible for different processes, like the authentication and authorization process, the publish process, and rendering the server UI. But one process that the application server will never do is the visualization process. All right, so now we're gonna jump to the next server. We have the VizQL server. This one gonna be interesting. All right, so previously we talked about the power of visuals and how human brain transform text into visuals and images. The VizQL is like our brain. It's gonna do the magic by converting numbers and text into visual and images. VizQL stands for Visual Query Language for Databases. The founders of Tableau, Chris and Pat, they did invent this language. Let's say that you drag and drop something in Tableau, the VizQL gonna convert this action to an SQL query and then send it to the data server to get the data. Then the data server gonna send the results back to the VizQL as raw data. And now VizQL gonna do the magic by converting those raw data into visuals and images present it at your client. All right, so the VizQL is the brain. It is very important Tableau component and responsible of the visualization process. And mainly it does two things. It's gonna generate queries from user action and it's gonna convert and transform the raw data into visuals and images. All right, everyone. So now we're gonna talk about the third one. We have the data server. So the data server is the one that knows everything about the data. It knows where to find the data, how to connect to it, and how to speak to it. The first task of the data server is to manage both extract and live data sources. If the data is inside Tableau, it's gonna send query requests to the data engine. But if the data is outside Tableau, it's gonna use 
the data connectors to send query requests to the external sources. And the data server knows how to speak to the sources. It acts like a proxy to the data sources, can speak many different database languages so that it sends query requests in a language that the database understands. And we have another task for the data server is to handle the data security. It checks if a user is allowed to see the data and do filterings if needed. And the data server manages as well the driver deployment. So the data server is the central data management component in Tableau Server and the one that knows how to get data from the sources. Alright, so now let's jump to the next component. We have the data engine. If we decide to store our data inside Tableau as an extract, then the data engine gonna be the one dealing with it. Different components can send requests to the data engine. Like for example, the data engine can receive a request from application server to publish a new extract. Then the data engine can execute and create operation to create a new extract and store data inside it. The data engine can receive as well a query request from the data server asking for data. So what's gonna happen here, the data engine gonna find the correct extract, it's gonna connect to the hard driver, and then it's gonna pull the needed extract from it. And at the end, the data gonna be sent back to the server. And finally, the data engine can receive a request from the backgrounder to update the content of an extract. So the data engine can execute an update operation by opening the extract and updating its content with the new data. So the data engine in Tableau is like any other database engine. It does different operations like it queries the data, it performs insert and update operations, and it creates new extracts. But only for the data inside Tableau server, inside the extracts. Okay, the next component is the repository. As you might already noticed, the repository was involved in every Tableau process. So let's talk about it. The repository stores many different types of data. Like for example, it's gonna store the workbooks that we publish to the server, but only the metadata part, not the data itself. So the XML files from the workbooks can be stored inside the repository. In the repository, we find as well the usage data. It's data that gonna help you to understand the performance and the traffic about your project. Like for example, you can find the total number of active users inside Tableau server, what is the total view counts by day, and you can find out the most used data sources in your project. Another type of data that you're gonna find inside the repository is the security informations. For example, which users are allowed to access your content or which users are allowed to access our Tableau server. Alright, so as you can see in the repository, there is different types of data and it contains as well huge amount of data in Tableau server. But it's very important to understand that is the data inside our dashboards and reports are not stored inside the repository. We have many other Tableau server components that's worth mentioning. Like for example, example the cache server. It stores almost everything like images, icons, results of queries, dashboards and so on. So if you start a dashboard that is already accessed before, the data gonna be pulled from the cache server. Another component is the backgrounder. In Tableau server you can create a schedule to refresh the data inside your extract and the task of the backgrounder is to check this schedule each 10 seconds and then trigger the process of refreshing the extract if the time comes. And the last component that I would like to to mention here is the search and browse. The users of Tableau server, they can search for content and this component is responsible for searching inside the repository and return the results to the users. All right, everyone, so finally we have the last puzzle, the server components. If we put it in the architecture, we will get the whole big picture of Tableau architecture. So now let's go and do very quick summary. The source layer, it is the one that is outside Tableau and contains our data. And it could be anywhere, like databases or files. In the desktop layer, the developers can start connecting Tableau desktop to the data sources with either copying the data inside Tableau using an extract connection or with the live connections to the sources. Then the developer is gonna start building visualizations using worksheets, dashboards, and stories. And both of the data source and the visualizations, we call it a workbook. And we can either send it as a file or share it to the server. The server layer is gonna host our workbooks and we can find many components, like the data connectors to connect our sources to the Tableau server and the gateway to connect the client request to the Tableau server 
and we have the application server responsible for the login and publishing processes, the VizQL server responsible for the visualization process, and the data server is the one responsible for the data management. And we have another component like the data engine that's gonna handle the extracts. And in Tableau server, we have three places where the data gonna be stored. And we have the repository that contains many different data like the XML of the workbooks and the security objects, but not the data itself. Because our data gonna be stored inside the file store as an extract. And we have the cache server that contains many different types of data to increase the Tableau performance. And the last one is the consumer layer. Here we found the different groups of users and clients, like the Tableau readers that needs only the TWBX files directly from the Tableau developers, and another group of users that they're gonna use Tableau desktop to develop new views. And we have the static readers that's gonna receive files like PDF and Excel. And then we have a big group of users that's gonna access Tableau server using either web or Tableau mobile to interact with the published workbook. All right, everyone. So one more thing that I would like to show you is this amazing dashboard from Tableau team. It's going to show you the different component inside Tableau server and how they're going to interact to do a task. So for example, if we go to the workflow or to the process, we can select, for example, access a view. And then we can select whether it's like an published extract or live. And over here we have like slider. If you drag it to the end, you're going to see how the components are interacting with each other to do the tasks. And on the right side, you will see description for each step. And this is a really great way to learn how Tableau Server works. I learned from this a lot for this tutorial. So make sure to check that if you want to see more details about other processes in Tableau Server. I'm going to leave the link in the tutorial materials. All right, guys. So that's all for the Tableau Server architecture and its components. And next, we will learn the Tableau Public architecture and what are the limitations of Tableau Public. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like, and comment. This is really going to help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.